Hi everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Red Pill Garage. Does your car's engine have an oil leak? Well, on today's episode, I'm going to show you a common oil leak that most cars develop over a period of time, diagnose and fix it. When diagnosing an engine oil leak, you want to start from the top of the engine and work your way down to the bottom, as gravity will draw the oil down in a downward direction. So the first thing you want to do is remove the engine beauty cover. And what you're looking for is a wet stain around the engine or a soiled section of the engine covered in dirt and dust. And there you have it there. All that dirt and grit is soaking up that engine oil, making it look like that. So it looks like that valve cover needs to be removed and we have to replace the valve cover gasket. And it is as simple as that to diagnose. Okay, on this 2006 Toyota Corolla, parts and tools required is an RC3090 valve cover gasket, a couple of air blowers, gasket sealant. I use a particular brand called Durco, which works really, really well. Some emery cloth paper, a couple of screwdrivers, 3 8 ratchet. An extension bar, telescopic mirror, pliers, a pick, a scraper, a torch, a 12mm deep socket, 10mm socket, a swivel, and our multi-function cleaner. And of course, don't forget your safety glasses. Okay, when taking a job like this on, what you want to look at is see what's attached to the valve cover. Things like your ignition coils, your know, coil harness, your engine breather hose or your PCV valve hose, things of that nature you have to remove first before you take your valve cover off. And here I'm just taking off the coil plugs. You have to be careful with them because on these particular Toyota Corollas, as these cars get older, those coil plug connectors actually become very brittle and they're easy to break. That's one coil out. And the second coil. Next, the engine breather hose and the PCV valve hose. Okay, next it's time to remove all the valve cover bolts. And you want to make sure you put them in a safe place and be careful when removing them not to drop them down the side of the engine because you may lose them forever. Okay, this next step when removing the valve cover you may get a slight feeling of anticipation not knowing on how much sludge you're going to find on the inside of this engine. And there you have it. Well this thing's done almost 200,000 Ks, it's not too bad. There is a little bit of sludge there but not too bad. We have a closer look now, and you can see all that clearly now. Okay, you can see the old glue residue there. That's where the timing chain cover meets the cylinder head. Once we give that a clean up, we're going to apply new gasket glue there to seal that up, so there's no leaks between that joint. And here's our old rubber gasket. Yeah, that's pretty stiff and it shouldn't break like that. Rubber should be nice and soft, but once the gasket becomes old, becomes hard and brittle and it just breaks away easily, just like that. And that's why it can't seal anymore and that's how you get your engine oil leaks. It just doesn't have that capacity to seal up anymore. Okay, once the rest of the gasket's removed, I'm going to use the pick to scrape out any of the crud or leftover gasket in the groove where the gasket sits. If you don't have a pick, you can use a small flat blade screwdriver. You'll still get the same result. It doesn't take much effort at all. Okay, next I'm going to use the multifunction cleaner to spray inside that groove there, just to soften up any of that crud to make things a bit easier. And that's the multifunction cleaner that I use. And now the rest of that crud should just come off nice and easy. Once you've loosened up all that crud, just get a rag and fold the rag over 
just enough so you can get it into the groove of the valve cover and then you can start cleaning it up that way and also it's going to help sponge up all that crud and the multifunction cleaner and you can see how well that's cleaned now it looks like it's brand new again and it's the same process where the spark plug tube gaskets sit so what it looks like now and then what you'll see what it looks like once it's all cleaned up and there's the difference very little effort if you have the right tools just take your time doing it and you should get a really good result now over the years I've come across valve covers where people have actually glued the gasket in there and if this is the case on your car what you will need to do is to get a wire brush once you've removed the rubber gasket you need to get the wire brush into that groove of the valve cover and you'll just have to scrape the gasket glue off I know it's a pain in the back side but you really don't have too many other choices you can now see how nice and flexible the new gasket is it's nice and soft and if you didn't clean it properly in that groove for whatever reason if there was bits of gasket in there or even glue what you'll find when you go to put the new gasket in there it won't go in all the way in that spot where there's the glue or gasket still in there and then what you'll find as it's protruding out and you go to put it back onto the motor it won't seal properly because it won't be a total flat surface to the rest of the gasket causing an engine oil leak again so that's why it's important to get it right the first time otherwise you'd be mad as a cut snake and I'm going to use the multi-function cleaner again and spray that around the top of the cylinder head where the gasket sits you only need enough just to make it wet so we can use our emery cloth paper and make sure you use the emery cloth not sandpaper the emery cloth is basically a strip of dense fabric that has small metallic or synthetic particles bonded to it usually aluminium oxide or iron oxide and it's specially made for metallic surfaces where sandpaper would just wear out too quickly and it would just tear up so you're better off just sticking with the emery cloth paper and in some cases you can actually use the emery cloth for metal polishing as well and finally just wipe down with a clean cloth and that's the end result you can see how nice and clean that surface is now and that's what you should try to aim for and now I've applied some of that Durko gasket glue there where that joint is for the timing chain cover to the cylinder head right there and one on the other side as well okay this next step is critical when lowering the valve cover down make sure the gasket doesn't get caught anywhere and come out of that groove and go walkabouts on you because when you're bolting the valve cover down you're definitely going to put a cut in it or a kink in it causing a major oil leak on your hands now what I like to do is to give it a quick check and just make sure you can see the gasket between the valve cover and the cylinder head and this is when I use the telescopic mirror at the back and you can see right there the gasket itself between the valve cover and the cylinder head and you want to make sure you can see that all the way around and then it's safe to bolt down all the way and now it's time to bolt down the valve cover when tighten the valve cover bolts down don't do it in one pass you want to do it in about three to four passes nice and even and a good way to start off with is doing it in the center and then working your way outwards 
Once you've done that, you can remount the coils and the coil plugs. Tighten down the coils, your engine breather hose and PCV valve hose. Okay, this next step is entirely optional. It's totally up to you if you want to do this or not, but because it's a client's car, I want to do the right thing and give it a nice cleanup for him. So basically what I do is I spray the greaser, especially around the heavily soaked area with oil, and give it a quick scrub just to loosen up all that dirt. Let that set in for about five to 10 minutes, then give it a quick hose off. Now, if you're gonna do this job at home, and you're going to degrease the engine and hose it down. If you don't have a compressor at home, I strongly recommend you do not do this at home because you need to thoroughly dry all the electrical components on the engine down. If you don't and you go to start the car, something will short out and you'll blow an electrical component and then you'll be forced to tow your car to a mechanic and it'll be an expensive bill. Now I'll spend a good 10 minutes drying the engine down, more so around the electrical connectors and plugs, but you don't want it as dry as a dead dingo's donger, but as dry as a nun's nasty. In other words, bloody dry. Now you want to make sure you're wearing your safety glasses. You can actually see the water shooting out through the side of the rag, and make sure you've got a rag covering those spark plug tube holes, so you don't get any water spraying up into your face. And for those of you at home that do have a compressor, make sure you thoroughly dry out those coil connectors. There can't be any water in there whatsoever. And also blow out the coils themselves. You certainly don't want any arcing down there. Okay, once you've refitted all the coils, you can now tighten the coil bolts down all the way. Push the connectors on. And now the engine beauty cover. And that's how you replace a valve cover gasket. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button not to miss out on any future videos. And I'll see you on the next episode of Red Pill Garage. Thank you for watching.